Hi, I'm Jay McClellan, and this video is a basic overview of GPS usage for search and rescue operations. I'm not going to try to cover all the hundreds of different things you can do with the GPS, just the basics that you need to use it effectively for the uh, most fundamental things you need to do during search and rescue. This is a Garmin eTrex 20X GPS. And if you have a different model, then the buttons and the menus may be different, but all the functionality that I'm going to cover is supported by practically any modern GPS. So the, the principles and functionality should be very similar. So to start, let's flip it over and take a look inside the battery compartment. You just open this little latch, turn counterclockwise, pull this off. I highly recommend using lithium batteries for uh, GPS, especially in search and rescue. Uh, number one, Lithium batteries have a shelf life of about 10 years, so they're good for something that's kept in storage most of the time. Although if you're going to store it for a long time, it's best to take them out of the device because it will still deplete them slowly. Secondly, when they are depleted, lithium batteries don't leak uh, compared to alkaline batteries, which do. And in fact, this unit has a bit of corrosion left from some alkaline batteries that were left in it and leaked. And it's been, it's been cleaned out and the contacts have been cleaned, but uh, Alkaline batteries can cause damage to the device if they leak, so another point for lithium. And finally, and, and very importantly, lithium batteries work in freezing temperatures, whereas alkaline batteries do not. Their capacity drops rapidly as the temperature drops below freezing. So if you're going to be using a GPS in cold conditions, lithium is the way to go. Okay, let's uh, pop the cover back on. Secure it. So on this model of GPS, there are three buttons on this side, two buttons on this side, and then this little joystick, which has up, down, right, left, and then you can push it to select things. And the first button to find is the one on the right. It's labeled light on top, but it's also the power button. So you press and hold that to turn it on. And it takes a while to boot up. And the screen uh, backlight often is not on during the boot up. And so it actually is on. You may or may not be able to see the little word Garmin there, but it is turning on. It just takes a while. So while we're waiting, um, this button labeled back up here will generally back you out of the current menu selection. These two buttons on the side, on the left, up and down, serve different functions depending on what you're doing. On the map view, they will zoom in and out. And on many other menu views, these are like a page up and page down, and that's quite handy. And then finally, the menu button to activate menus. So you can see the screen came on briefly and then turned off again. And that's because it has a backlight, backlight timer that uh, turns off after 15 seconds of inactivity. So if you nudge any button, it'll come back on. You can also tap this button on the side to turn it on and also to check the status. So this will let you set the backlight intensity and check the battery level. Let me go back. It timed out. Check the battery level and uh, GPS signal level. I'll press back to get back to the main menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down. I'm using the joystick right and left and go into Setup. And I'm going to cursor down to Reset. And then down to the bottom, Reset All Settings. Sometimes it bumps, so you got to be careful. Press and select Yes. Again, it's sometimes kind of hard to click without uh, moving the joystick. Okay, so that reset everything to default. You don't have to do that, but now everything I'm going through is really the system uh, as it would come from the factory. We'll press back. And the next thing I'm going to do is go into System, Satellite System. You don't have to do this. You can see it's having trouble finding satellites because I'm indoors. Um, I'm going to say no, don't search. And I'm going to switch into demo mode. Oops. And again, it's hard to hit this button sometimes without moving it. Uh, you don't have to do that, but uh, switching into demo mode will allow me to get satellite data inside where I'm filming. Okay, so we'll back out of that by pressing back. Now, number one thing uh, that I would tell you to do is to go in and check your coordinate system and units. We'll start with the coordinate system or position format. Uh, so if I go in there for uh, search and rescue, we use the U.S. National Grid coordinate system, and by default, it'll come into degrees, hours, minutes, seconds. That's not what we want. So you need to know how to check and switch that coordinate. Go in here, and then you can 
scroll down and there's a lot of different systems and remember the buttons on the right act as a page up and page down so you can just press the down button to go page down page down it's amazing how many different coordinate systems there are um, and we'll go up and select US National Grid at this point I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see the screen I think you've seen enough of me pressing the buttons next I'm going to go up to units and for search and rescue we want to select metric units for distance and speed we'll leave elevation in feet because most of our maps have contours that are calibrated in feet um, but for distance and speed we want metric and finally one more thing I'm going to change in uh, under the setup menu is under display you can set the backlight timeout and 15 seconds is pretty fast you can see it was timing out as I was uh, as I was moving around for this video I'm going to change it to stays on all the time I don't recommend that in general because it'll burn the batteries down faster but you might want to lengthen it to 30 seconds or a minute but for the video stays on is what we're going to use all right that should be good enough I'm going to press back and back you can just keep pressing back to kind of get to the main menu and the main display you're going to look at most of the time when uh, when the GPS is operating is the map display so let's cursor up to that and select it now in the map display these up and down arrows down means smaller scale so it will zoom in they'll zoom in on your current position the map that these GPS's come with honestly is not very good it doesn't have a lot of detail it's possible to load additional maps into these but they have limited storage uh, if you have a more expensive GPS you may be able to get much better mapping systems but I'll zoom in and show you what we can see and you can see that triangle at the bottom is our current position uh, again it's it's simulated it's the last known location uh, but it's uh, because I'm in demo mode it's pretending to have some GPS fix even though it doesn't in order to make the map display more useful I'd like to display my current position in USNG coordinates so I'm going to click on menu and then select setup map and cursor down to data fields and by default it comes up with zero but if I select that I can select up to uh, four small data fields a variety of different ones I'm going to just select one large data field for this example and now if I press back you can see it's showing one big field of data over top the map uh, and by default it's a trip odometer which is not very useful to me um, so I'm going to press menu again and you can see now we have a new option change data fields so I'll cursor up to that and select it and there's only one it's just highlighting in orange so I got to press enter again to select that's the one I want to edit and now I can pick what it is I want to display there and I'm going to move up I'd like to display my location and there's two different options I can either show it in latitude and longitude or in the selected coordinate system which is what I want so I'm going to pick location selected and uh, it's highlighted in, or in orange so we're still in edit mode and we could change that if we want but if we like it then we'll press back and so now this is the map display and it's going to give me my current location in uh, USNG coordinates um, and again I'm using a, a demo mode so these are simulated coordinates but as you're walking around then these will change you can add other fields to show your uh, your current heading uh, a trip odometer if you want to show accumulated distance etc you can customize it to your liking but location is really the primary one you want to be able to display when reporting our location to incident command normally for search and rescue we uh, we would drop the last digit and only give four digits of each part of our coordinate and so we would report these coordinates as four four five zero five two two three you don't round it off you just drop the last digit uh, you can report all uh, 10 digits but it's preferable just to report eight because the last digits really are noise the GPS is not that accurate to within one meter and uh, reporting your uh, just the four digits of each part gives you a 10 meter accuracy which is ac adequate for search and rescue purposes okay so we can find where we are uh, suppose that incident command instructs us to proceed to a different location and gives us coordinates how do we do that in the GPS suppose incident command tells us to proceed to 44985415 how are we going to do that well in any screen press the menu button twice 
and that'll take you back to the main menu. And one of the options is where to. So we can enter where to. And we can create a waypoint if we want to enter uh, those and save it for later, or we can simply just enter the coordinates directly where we want to go. So let's do that. And to move to a different part of the coordinates, because the 16 Tango Foxtrot November is not likely to change, we go down to this arrow. So we have to cursor down to the arrow at the bottom right, and then uh, press the joystick to select, and that moves us to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. And the coordinates that Incident Command gave us are 4498. So we have 4, 4, now we need to enter 9, and now we need to enter 8. And they only gave us uh, 8 digits total, 4 of each. And so for the last digit, it doesn't make a big difference whether you leave it whatever it is, but it's a little cleaner to just change it to a zero. So you add a zero if you have to enter because the GPS requires all five digits here. Uh, the other uh, part of the coordinate, the north, so that was the easting, which is the first part. The second part that Incident Command gave us was five, five, four, one, five, and then we'll add a zero. So we've entered the coordinates given to us by Incident Command, and we want to proceed to there. So I'll press Done. And uh, do we want to simulate driving this route? No. We simply want to go there. Okay, so now we're back in our map display, and uh, if I push the down arrow over on the left to zoom in, you can see that our location is shown by the triangle at the bottom right, and our destination coordinates that, I, that were entered is shown by that push pin um, in the, uh, toward the upper right there. So that's where we want to go. I'm going to press menu twice to get to the main menu and then go down and select the compass screen. Now on the compass screen, this big triangle, when we're, when we're actually navigating, which we are now because I've, I've given it a destination, that triangle, you can see it's not pointing north. North is straight up and down. Um, in this example, that is pointing to our destination. And so if we start walking in the direction of, of the red arrow, um, that's the way we have to head. Now, in, in demo mode for this video, it's not actually live, unfortunately. Uh, but basically, as you turn this, what it's going to do is it, if you turn it, the arrow will continue to point straight toward your destination. And so when the red arrow points straight up, you're facing your destination and you just start walking. As you're navigating, it'll display your current speed in kilometers per hour and distance to next. And in this case, next means the only destination we've set. Uh, you can set up a complicated route with multiple uh, locations, multiple waypoints. But in this case, distance to next just means distance to the end of the place we, we told it to go to. So we're about two kilometers away. Uh, so as we start walking, we can gauge uh, approximately how long it's going to take, but the, uh, but the uh, GPS will also calculate that and give us an ETA. So again, um, doesn't work in the demo mode, but uh, basically just imagine that as you turn your body so that uh, the arrow rotates and points straight up, that's all you need to do to face toward your destination. There's one more function we'll, uh, we'll cover in this video as a basic functionality of GPS for search and rescue. Suppose that you are uh, either walking to a specific location as we have here or just out searching an area and you come upon something interesting. Um, maybe it's not so interesting that you have to report it right away, but you want to record your current location uh, to be able to refer to it later. Maybe it's just the end of a sweep as you're searching an area and you want to be able to find that corner on the end of your next sweep. Any, any reason you can think of where you might want to save a location. Uh, that's called a waypoint. Let's look how to do that. So if you press menu and then menu again to get to the main menu, you'll see this option, mark waypoint. And uh, if you don't really need to store additional information, if you're only going to save one or two, you can just leave it at that. And it's going to store this as waypoint 002. It'll store your current coordinates and location, and you're done. However, you can also cursor up and give it a more meaningful name. So if you cursor up to the top and to the name field, 
and then uh, press enter. You can then call, you can then uh, type a name with the keyboard. Um, whatever name you want to give it, and then cursor down to done. You can also enter additional notes for that waypoint if you need to. Um, and then simply say done. That's all there is to it. Um, then later on, if you want to navigate back to that waypoint, you can go under where to, and that will be one of the options. If you click where to, um, we'll stop the current navigation. Go back into where to. Uh, you can select waypoints, and then it will come up with, uh, right at the top, the waypoint that I selected. So if you select that waypoint and go, now we're back in navigation mode, and, and of course it's the coordinates where we are, so we've, we've already arrived, not surprisingly. Um, so now you know how to set up your GPS into the proper coordinate system. You know how to use the map display and turn on your current location in USNG coordinates. You know how to enter a destination in USNG coordinates and navigate to it. And you know how to mark a waypoint at your current position. Those are really the basics, and that's really all you need to know in order to be uh, effective at search and rescue using a GPS. Clearly, there are a lot of other things you can do, and I encourage you to go out and find the documentation on those, but this is really all you need to get started, and I hope you found this useful.